Follow along with me today as I reburrow this Remington 700 that's chambered in 6.5 Remington Short Action Ultramag. So with this rifle, it looked pretty from the outside, but somebody put lipstick on a pig. For starters, they Loctited all these screws for the scope rail. I got all of them loose but one. And the last one I took out, I broke a high quality Torx bit off in the, in the screw. So I had to come back through the action from the bottom side and drill a hole through this 632 screw to get the, to get the bit out and then heat it up just a little bit so I could remove the screws. So that was the first challenge. Then I get the action apart and start doing a little bit of inspecting. And you can see them ridges right there. Um, you could feel them with your fingernail. I mean, they're super rough. Almost like somebody took a facing reamer or something to the top of it. Not real great. Um, I put blue dicum on the top. And then if you rub it on a piece of paper, you can see how bad them ridges really stick out now. So that ain't good. Top of that, it's hard to see, but somebody lapped the recoil lugs. And they lapped them so much you could feel it and measure it, and they got about a, I'd say, a three thousandths. groove wore in both recoil lugs. So one, the the recoil lugs actually are wore off three to three and a half thou according to the measurements, which is fine if they all matched, but then they put in an aftermarket bolt and this bolt's never been lapped, you could tell. So I thought, well, let's see what kind of bolt contact we're getting. So I put in the bolt, did a bunch of rubbing here to see, and lo and behold, only one bolt is making contact. And it's this, this lug right here. That one lug is making contact on the bolt that's right here. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna chuck this in the lathe, take these bushings, indicate everything, and uh, we'll cut a recoil lug square to the bore and our receiver face square to the bore. So we got something square to uh, to build off of. I don't think I'm gonna worry about the, the threads in the action. I'll put an indicator on them to see. But we'll at least true up the recoil lugs and the, bolt and the receiver face, just so we got a nice square face to go off of for a barrel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out right here. And we got two tapered bushings. One's right here, and one's right there. And we're gonna put them in the action, like you see. And then tapered bushings are precision ground to go over this mandrel. We'll slide the mandrel on the bushings, like so. And once we get them in here, now we have something to indicate off of. So we'll chuck this in the lathe in the true bore alignment chuck, and we'll be able to adjust it up and down and around and around. So we're perfectly concentric to the action. So we'll go to the lathe and get to getting that set up. So to prevent it from getting all scratched up, I put a piece of paper in there and I made a bushing that matches the action perfectly, split it, and then now when I clamp down with the chuck jaws, there's no way it can deform or scratch the action. Now on our first axis, we got zero tenths of run out, so we're good there. We're gonna flip it 90 degrees and do it again on the second axis. So see how far out of whack this one is? 
And she's away. She's ten thousandths. Oh, you can see our first round of adjustments were not moving at all on the tenth indicator. The reason we got to go out is because that shaft's in there wobbling around. So if we go out here and rotate it, we're about two thou out of whack. Generally, when it's that far out of whack, you got to do it twice. So we'll get it cleaned up on this time. The next time, we should be good to go. All right, this is a tenth indicator. No movement besides the drag or golden. Less than a tenth run out all the way across there. All right, now we got the indicator to the bore of the action. We can uh, we can make our facing cuts and true upper recoil lugs. All right. Them are the grooves I was referring to. You can feel with your finger. And then I'll zoom back out here. And we're uh, right at two thousands out of whack there. So we'll get that face cleaned up all nice and pretty. That cut right there, you can see them grooves that were in it. This side's completely cleaned up smooth. This one hasn't been cut at all, and see how deep them grooves are? Next pass should clean it all up. Now, she is just smooth as glass. All right, we got everything trued up on the face. Nice and smooth, looks like glass. Let me come over and double check our work here. And no run out whatsoever. Life is good. All right, forgive the shot at camera angle, but best we can do with what we got. We're going to fire this up and I'm going to uh, clean her up. All right, now you can see we got all of it all nice and clean and everything's true to the bore. So as long as the bolt lugs are straight, we should have good contact with the bolt lug surfaces. All right, after I trued up the lugs, can see the left one and the right one we got good contact it completely wipes the uh, dry erase marker off so the bolt was plumb fine it was just the, the receiver that was goofed up but now we got it all trued up we should be able to put the barrel on and be good to good to go all right last night I got the action all trued up Verifying this is a 260 caliber barrel. It is. So now we'll clean the barrel and we'll do the bore inspection. All right, doing the barrel inspection. Go all the way out, come in. Pretty dang smooth. No crazy tool marks anywhere that I've seen. Lands are nice and uniform. Turn it 90 degrees, go back up. Don't see any complaints with this barrel. So I think it'll be a, a good barrel for the customer. One thing I will say is I'm gonna put this down here and hopefully you can see both at the same time. I don't know what causes this in the manufacturing process, but you can see we're only like an eighth inch, quarter inch into it. See that mark on the screen there? On a lot of different barrels that I've bore scoped, I've seen them marks way up into the bore, like halfway down. 
Never on a Wilson yet, but uh, some of uh, factory rifles. But this is so close, we're gonna cut that off anyways when we do the chamber, so that'll never bother anything. But if anybody out there knows what causes that, let me know. I'd like to know from my own information. So, just like all my other videos you guys watched, aluminum collars, gives you a parallel surface to grab a hold of, taper cut to match the barrel, and paper to keep it from getting all scratched up. Um, hands down, the best way I've found to hold the barrel securely in the lathe. Sorry about the reflection on the screen, but I got my blueprint all made up. We just take all the measurements. This is a recoil lug. This is our receiver action, and that's the bolt. And then we just follow the math. It gives us 10 thousandths play for any dirt or grime or buildup, especially for a field rifle. So now all I got to do is indicate the barrel and the lathe and make our cuts. All right, this one fought me a while. I'll go the other way. We're bouncing the same way every time. We go all the way out with her. Oop, over five inches. We're still dialed. Alrighty, next thing we do is cut the tenon, threads, and chamber. Yeah, we got the recoil on there. There's no play. Pretty much a, almost an interference fit. Life is good. Next thing we're going to do is mark where the threads are going to start. Like so. Then I'll cut my relief right there. Pull this off. My marks there. Got my relief from my thread cutting tool to start, and then we'll start cutting threads. All right, threads are cut, no play. Tightens up to the recoil lug. Next step is cutting our bolt nose cone recess area. Well, I'll use an end mill, cut the rough size, and then I'll come back and finish it with the boring bar. Got our go gauge in, it goes, no issues. Pull that out. We got our no go gauge, goes in, hard stop. We're head spaced. All right, now the time to do the muzzle work. Customer wants to cut 24 inches, which is good. Um, and he wants us to install this little beast muzzle brake. These are a self-timing brake, so it should be pretty simple and straightforward to install. And then uh, I'll show you how I get it level with the rifle. But first, let's cut these threads. Now I got the muzzle end all indicated. Keep going all the way out. Next step, we gotta cut the threads for the brake. All 
All right, all the machine work's done. The muzzle brake fits nice. No play in the threads. No wiggle whatsoever. So next thing we gotta do is take it out of the lathe. This is a self-timing muzzle brake. So I'll show you how I come up with an idea to time it. All right, spell on the brake here. I use the recoil lug to level the action. And then this brake has a groove machined into it. Perfectly rectangle the bore. And I use the bubble here to get her level. So yeah, a little trick there to get a brake level with the action. Well guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. Super happy how this one turned out. Got the muzzle brake on. Showed you guys how to time it, level with the recoil lug. Got it lasered. Anywho, as always, thanks for following along. Till next time, God bless.